have to build this kit. I think it's a perfect opportunity for another get into RC video. So you want to build an RC car kit. You are in the right spot. We've got a great video plan that will give you 10 reasons why you should build an RC car. Now, some of those reasons are you get to choose the components that go inside of the kit. And some of the reasons are you get to see how the kit actually works and goes together. We're going to use this Traxxas Stampede 4x4 kit to show you all the workings of building a kit. And it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, let's get right into the video. So for me to better illustrate the reasons why you'd want to build up a kit, I am going to build up the Stampede 4x4 throughout the video. Now, I do want to tell you that uh, you should not be afraid of building up a kit. Most kits nowadays have excellent instructions, such as this Traxxas Stampede kit here. I mean, just really nicely detailed, illustrated pictures to show you everything that you need to know, what size hardware. I mean, if you need help with the hardware, you could actually take the hardware Hold it up to the instruction manual and it will be the same size as what you see in the key over here. Uh, so it's really easy to follow and, and you'll learn. You'll learn throughout and that's what this video is all about too. Now first up in this instruction manual is to assemble the differentials. And that is reason number one, you should build up an RC kit. So you learn about differentials. You learn what they're made up of. You learn how to put them together. And the reason why it's so important is the differential is a key part of the car. It helps distribute the power to the wheels. And sometimes when you go around the corner, the outside wheel is spinning faster than the inside wheel and the differential will help distribute power to the wheels. Now there's a lot that goes into a differential. Uh, sometimes there's gear differentials, sometimes there's ball differentials, uh, but depending on what you have, this one in particular is a gear differential. Um, you have a, a differential cup and you've got the gears and you've got some gaskets and stuff. And so when you go and put this together, you know where the gaskets are and you know what the gaskets do. They hold the oil into the differential. And if you see some oil leaking out, you now know, hey, I might have to go and maintain my vehicle and swap out some of the gaskets. If it's the one on the end, it might be the small blue gasket. If it's a, a big puddle in the center of the chassis, it might be the big gasket in the center. Or if you do go and drive your car pretty hard and there's some grinding noise from the rear of the vehicle, the front of the vehicle, there's differentials sometimes in three parts of the car, the front, center, and rear, uh, depending on where you hear the, the, the grinding noise, you'll know that, hey, I might have to go and take it apart and maybe it's the internal gears that may have broken or maybe the, the larger ring gear may have lost a few teeth. And so now you have a good idea of what to look for in your differential if something goes wrong or if you just need to do some general maintenance or if you want to tune your differential. Yes, they have different types of oils that you could put in that will change the action of the differential. I've got my differentials built up and it's on to reason number two, the shocks. The shocks are a very important part of your car. They are what help damp the car when it's going over bumps and jumps and uh, they require some maintenance and you can tune them as well. Now, as far as maintenance goes, when you get your shock, uh, you know, this one's assembled from, from Traxxas, but some of them, they do need to be assembled. There's some seals that go in the inside. Sometimes there's a bladder to compensate for oil displacement. And so you'll learn about those parts. And again, if you see some leaking going on, uh, you know, over time, you'll know that maybe the O-ring on the bottom needs to be replaced. Or if you hear a lot of air on the inside, maybe the bladder needs to be replaced on the inside of it. Or if the shock's not working properly, you'll know to check the shaft to make sure it's not bent. So there's a number of things to look out for. Uh, another thing to look out for is when the spring is on there, uh, maybe the spring is really loose. So maybe the lower perch fell off in a crash and you'll need to replace that. So it just gives you an idea of what to look for if something goes wrong. Now on the good side of things, you get to tune your shocks if you want to. Now the Traxxas kit does come with oil. Uh, and it's uh, I think it's like a 30 weight oil, but there's all different types of weights that you could put in the shock to alter the way it reacts. So you could go it down to a 20 weight oil, which will be a little bit thinner. You could go up to a 40 weight oil, which will be a little bit thicker. It'll have a little bit stiffer of a response when you push down on the shocks. So there's all sorts of things you could do. And even the same with springs, there's all different spring rates that you could go and swap out depending on how you want your vehicle to feel when you're driving it. So building the shocks is a awesome part of learning about your RC. So number three on our list is the vehicle suspension. Now there are a lot of parts that make up the vehicle suspension. We've got suspension arms and we've got shock towers and we've got hubs and camber links and even suspension pins. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on, a lot of stuff to keep track of. And it's really important that you know all the workings of the suspension. So if something happens to it, you could go and replace that part if necessary. You'll kind of figure out that like, hey, that crack is not supposed to be in that pivot point there in that arm. I need to replace that or my suspension is binding. Why 
is it? Well, maybe a suspension pin is bent and you know to take it out, look at it, and if it's curved, you probably need to go and replace that. So just knowing all the different parts will help you out. And then, you know, if you have to replace it, it's much easier to take it apart and, and replace something. Instead of like disassembling the entire side of the car, maybe you know that you only have to take out a, a pin and uh, maybe take the hub off and, and that's all you need to do in order to replace something versus taking, you know, the majority of it apart. So the other good thing about uh, knowing your suspension is, is you basically get to see all the pivot points for the things that you can go and tune. So you'll see the different shock points. And when you really start to get into the hobby, you may wanna start altering the positions of things to see how the car handles and maybe make it better and easier for you to drive. Now on to reason number four of why you should build an RC kit, the chassis. This is the main section of your RC vehicle. So getting to know how all the components go onto it will make your life a lot easier when you're maintaining it. And of course, if you have to make some repairs. Now it's not often that you do have to make repairs to a chassis. Sometimes they do bend or break, but basically if you need to make repairs or changes to other parts, you wanna know how everything really goes together. Like on this Stampede 4x4, it only requires a few screws to take the front clip off of the chassis. So that's a lot easier, you know, knowing how to do that versus buying a ready to run and trying to figure out how this all comes apart. Now, other things you want to be familiar with on the chassis are things like, you know, the battery area, what size battery you can put in and, and the height of the battery. Uh, you'll be able to figure that out. Sometimes the body mounts, they are adjustable. So, you know, if the body is sitting up too high, you will want to go ahead and adjust that. And you just familiarize yourself with everything here in case you need to do some work, you want to make some changes or even some upgrades. Number five is you get to build the steering. Now, why is this so important? Well, you need to turn your car where you want it to go. And uh, if there's something wrong with the steering, it's not gonna steer as easily and you might get a little frustrated when driving your RC car. So when you get to build up the steering, again, you get to see all the components. You get to figure out what may be hampering its performance. You know, if it, a lot of dirt gets into the steering components, it could slow things down, things can start to bind and you wanna be able to figure out what that problem is on your own without having to run into a hobby store or or ask a buddy. So there are a number of different parts that make up the steering. There's typically a steering bell crank system in the car, and these are the main arms that steer the steering links, which turn the knuckles, which turn the wheels. So you wanna be aware of all those components. Make sure that everything spins nice and free, and there's usually two cranks, and sometimes there's bushings inside that you wanna make sure have maybe a light coating of grease, or if they're ball bearings, you wanna make sure that they're spinning freely. So there's all these little things that you wanna look at. You've got, the, sometimes there's center links between the two. You wanna make sure it's not broken or bent. Uh, same with the steering tie rods. You wanna make sure that these aren't bent because if it's bent, one wheel might be turned out more than the other or turned in. Uh, so you wanna make sure that these are all, you know, straight and working properly. Everything spins nice and free. So when you get to build your steering, you'll know all about its working components. And if something ever happens, or if you wanna upgrade again, you'll be able to do that nice and easily. Let's talk about the driveline. Now, when I worked in a hobby shop a little while back, the driveline was a common source for problems with people. And you know, if they had just gone ahead and built their car, they would actually have been able to fix it. And they actually said that, wow, it was that easy. And yes, some of the stuff is very easy to fix and very easy to maintain if you know what to look for. Let's start off by talking about the transmission. Now with this particular setup, uh, you know, we've seen the differential in part one, but there's actually another gear in this gearbox here called the bevel pinion. And you just want to, you know, from familiarize yourself with it. You know, obviously it's got teeth on there. You want all the teeth to be there. Otherwise it's going to cause a grinding noise. So if you hear that grinding noise, it may be because a tooth is broken off or if the driveline has a whine to it, maybe it just needs some maintenance. Maybe you need to add some more grease back onto the gears to make everything work nice and free. Uh, other parts of the drivetrain that you need to know about are the ball bearings. Uh, so most cars nowadays are equipped with ball bearings. And if these little bearings seize up because you've gone through water and mud and stuff, this will cause drag on the driveline. Maybe a wheel won't move. Uh, maybe your electronics will get hot. There's a number of things that will happen if ball bearings seize up in the drive line. So what you want to do is basically just take a drive shaft and spin the bearings to make sure everything uh, rides nice and free. And if it doesn't spin free, you either need to clean it out or replace it. Another item to look out for is the drive shaft. So these should also uh, slide in and out nice and free depending on the drive shaft that you have. Look out for major wear when you, during your maintenance uh, procedures and uh, just keep an eye on these because again, uh, if uh, these start to wobble or if they twist, uh, depending on the type that you have, it could cause issues, but again, you'll be able to take it apart because you know exactly what it looks like when you build a brand new kit. Just other parts of the drive line. So this is a four wheel drive car. Uh, you know, you may be building a two wheel drive car, but uh, there's extra drive shafts in the center. 
just to make sure everything's running nice and true. And if you have a two wheel drive car, maybe it's got a transmission in the back of it with three gears in there and you wanna make sure that those gears are in top shape. And uh, finally, let's talk to you about the subwoofer clutch and the main gearing here. So this is a subwoofer clutch out of this car. Sometimes there's a gear differential, but basically if you hear your car slipping, it sounds like it's slipping. It's not really going anywhere, but you hear the motor going, you know, maybe the slipper clutch is too loose. So you have to go and tighten this down or maybe the pad inside has cracked and it needs to be replaced. So again, you'll be able to visually see that, hey, that isn't like when I built the kit, I might need to repair that. And finally, the pinion and spur gear is a, a common source of issues. Probably one of the biggest issues out there for people learning how to build an RC car is just getting the gear mesh right. So you just want just a little bit of slop between the two gears so they're not mashed together. If they're mashed together, that could cause heat, that could cause your electronics to burn out, and you don't want it too loose because then the gears are gonna strip out. So you just want a little bit of play between the two when you go in and set your pinion and spur mesh and your drivetrain will operate as it should. Now, number seven, and that has to do with wheels and tires. Now, some kits, they don't come with wheels and tires, so you get to select that right off the bat and you get to pick out exactly what you like for the surface that you're going to run on. Other kits, they do come with tires. Sometimes they're even glued, sometimes they're not glued. So just be aware, you might have to pick up some CA glue in order to glue up your tires. One other thing to throw out at you, if you do get a kit with wheels and tires that are separate that need to be glued, now is your chance to go ahead and get a different tire if you want to or a different rim. If you don't like a chrome rim, you could go maybe get a black rim instead. Uh, so you have that option to go and select what you want before you continue building your kit. Now, gluing tires isn't the easiest. It's probably the least favorite part of building a car. So just take your time, clean your wheels properly and your tires, and then glue everything carefully so it bonds the wheels and tires and they don't come off when you're running. Now, this actually may be the best part about building your own RC kit. You getting to choose the electronics. Most kits, they don't come with electronics. Some of them do. There are some that have full radio systems and, and the speaker controller battery. And some just have a motor. Some just have a motor and ESE, but a lot of them don't have any electronics at all. And that allows you to select what you want to put into the vehicle. And there are a lot of different electronics to choose from. You could go from baseline radio systems all the way up to high-end radio systems. Same with the battery, same with the motors, speed controllers, servos. There's all different types of electronics out there and, uh, and all different price ranges as well. Well, so you really get to decide what fits you best and what you're going to do with it. So for my particular build right here, I'm just gonna put in some Traxxas electronics. Some of these I've had from other projects where I've upgraded, so it's, it really comes in handy. Maybe that's something that uh, would apply to you as well. Maybe you have a car that uh, is just no longer repairable, but the electronics are still good, and you could take those electronics out and transfer them over to a new kit. But for this particular build, I'm just gonna go and put in a Traxxas TQI radio system. Uh, this is a pretty good radio system. Comes with some of the ready to runs uh, but it's going to go in our kit as well uh, i actually have a 2075x servo that came from i think this was my traxxas udr which is a metal gear high torque servo and it's better than a ready to run servo that would have come in a stampede 4x4 and actually i have a brush motor and speed controller from an old traxxas two-wheel drive stampede build that will work fine in here as well and then of course the battery so right here i have a two cell lipo battery Maybe you just want to go with a six cell nickel metal hydride battery. Your, the options are totally there. And the same with the charger as well. The charger battery, so you have the option to go and pick that out as well. So, you know, go out there, do some research, see what you want to do. Do you want to go brush, brushless? If you want to get into a nitro vehicle, you'll get to pick the engine and the tune pipe and the servos. Uh, so building a kit allows you to get exactly what you want from the start. So the build is already coming together. Now we're on to step number nine, and that is painting the body. Now, don't be afraid of painting the body. I see a lot of people that are like, I just don't want to do that. It can actually be pretty easy. You don't have to go wild with a paint job with multiple colors and airbrushing this and that and the other thing. You could just get a single can of spray paint and paint it one color. And a lot of manufacturers with these ready to run kits will give you decals so you could go and make it look pretty cool. Like Traxxas right here, they have their logo decals and they actually give you windshield decals so you don't even have to mask the windows out. And other manufacturers, they actually give you the masking tape to put on the windows and you can still spray your one color and put decals on it. And if you do want to get a little bit adventurous and you know go a little while with some extra colors, 
you could do something really simple with just some masking tape and find different size masking tape and you can just put some lines on the body and then when you pull the masking tape off you spray different colors now the only other thing with the bodies is some of them aren't cut out and they need some holes in it so you may need some additional tools like some scissors and some drill bits to, to cut out the body wheel wells and the holes for the body posts but that's fairly simple as well they're typically dimples in the body that show you where to drill the holes and of course there are lines that show you where to cut it out so don't be afraid of finishing off an rc body and finally number 10 setting up your electronics now is a great opportunity for you to learn how to properly set up your electronics you know some of them are a drop in and play type of system some speed controllers basically pick up the endpoints when you turn them on but the steering on the other hand you need to really set the endpoints on there if you have that adjustability in your radio system. It'll just prevent your servo from possibly burning out. It will give you maximum steering. So spending the time to set up your electronics is key. And when you have to go and make adjustments later on down the road, you know exactly how to do that. So there are a bunch of different adjustments, again, depending on the type of system that you do buy, the type of electronics you do buy. But most nowadays do have some trim features. So make sure that your trim features for your servos are set as far as if they're reversed or not so when you turn your steering wheel to the right it goes right and then when you turn to the left it goes left if it doesn't do that then you have to flip your reversing switches on your radio system same with the throttle if you pull full throttle and it goes backwards you have to flip that reversing switch and once that is set make sure that the wheels are facing straight and once you do that, you can go and set your endpoints. So we actually have a great video on how to set up your endpoints. I will link a card up above to that. Uh, but go through your system, go through your speed controller, make sure that you set the throttle endpoints if you have a really high-end speed controller. Just make sure you read your manuals and in the end, it will just make your RC experience a whole lot better. Now, all the reasons I told you throughout this video on why you need to build a kit is just to open your mind to see what you could do when you do build a kit, what you get out of building a kit. Because if you really want to get into the RC hobby, you really need to know all of these elements. And building a kit, even a simple kit like this, and there are many others out there, it will help you get into that process and you'll understand all the different parts, how to fix things, how to upgrade things, what to look out for. And it's just a really great way to get into the hobby and experience experience it. If you do decide to build a kit, make sure you grab yourself a good set of tools to make assembly a lot easier. I'll put part numbers and links to the products we use in this video down in the description below. While you're there, please check out the link to our online store, IconRC.com, for a wide selection of RC products. All right, I hope that helps some of you out. Now, I have to go outside. I got to drive this thing and see what it could do. Of course, I'll give you guys a little action clip up next. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our other helpful how-to videos.